All right, now we're going to talk about the end behavior of a polynomial graph. And this means as x gets really, really large, goes out to infinity, or goes out to negative infinity, what are the y values doing? So to start off, we're going to start with something we, we already are familiar with, and that's the graph of y equals x squared. We all know what the graph of that looks like. All right, it's just a little parabola that goes up like such. Okay, We're just sketching it. We're not, you know, it's vertex is at the origin or whatnot, but that's the idea. Okay. Now on your on your calculator, graph y equals x to the fourth. All right, push pause and graph that and then come back. All right, so now you should get something that looks like that. It sort of looks like a parabola, but it's not really a parabola. This here is a little flatter uh, than the uh, the quadratic situation. Okay, but it has similar similar shape, similar idea. All right, so now graph this one. y equals x to the 6 minus 2x cubed plus x minus 3. All right, when you graph that one, you get something, and I'm not worried too much too worried about what's going on in the middle, okay? But it comes down, and it might do something. I'm going I'm to dash this. It might do something inside here a little bit. Don't really know, okay? And then it comes up like such, okay? The stuff in the middle here uh, that's dashed, I don't really care what's going on about that right now in this video. I'm more concerned about what's happening out here on the left and out here on the right, okay? And everybody see that uh, your graph is going up uh, out when we move out to the left and going up as we move out to the right. Everybody see that? Okay, that's called the end behavior. As x gets large in this direction, out towards positive infinity, your y values finally just keep getting larger and larger and larger and larger. And as x uh, goes off to negative infinity, uh, for this particular example, your y values continue to get larger and larger and larger and larger. Okay, so the stuff in the middle we're not worried about right now. It's this end behavior. Okay. All right, so now let's go over here and do x cubed. Right, everybody know what the graph of x cubed looks like. All right, so it goes up like such. Okay, so now graph y on your calculator y equals x to the fifth minus 4x cubed plus x. All right, this time you get something like, and then I'm going to dash it again. Something along those lines, okay? And again, I don't really care what's going on in the middle here. That's why I've got it dashed. It's what's going off when we, what's going on when we go off to the left and when we go off to the right. And as we see here, as x gets uh, really large, goes off towards positive infinity, your graph's going up. Your y values keep getting larger and larger and larger. And as x goes off to negative infinity, your y values shoot off towards negative infinity. They keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So it kind of has the same idea as x cubed, Everybody see that? Because x cubed, if, if you take from the origin here and you go out to the left, your, your function's falling as you go out to the left. And if you go out to the right, then your function is rising as you go out to the right. Everybody see that? So same idea here. If this is the origin, follow the cursor. If this is the origin. So as x goes off to negative infinity, your graph falls, right? And as x goes off to positive infinity, your graph rises. Right? So we're kind of really I'm going to talk about it in terms of falling to the left and rising to the right, which is really what x cubed does. So you need to keep x cubed in mind. That will help here in a second. As opposed to, say, y equals x squared, where uh, I'm going to refer to it as, well, as we go out from the origin, it's rising to the left and it's rising to the right. Even this last one down here, x to the sixth minus 2x cubed plus x minus 3, as you from the origin, if you go out to the left, your graph is rising, and as you go out to the right, your graph is also rising. Everybody cool with that? Okay. Now the difference is the degrees of these polynomials on the left here are all even degreed polynomials, whereas the polynomials over here on the right are all odd degree polynomials. Right? And that's the catch. Is the degree of the polynomial even, or is the degree of the polynomial odd? All right. The degree of the polynomial being even or odd, along with the um, sign of the leading coefficient is going to help you determine well, what your graph is doing on its end behavior. And that's what we're going to generalize up here on this next page. 
All right, so suppose we have a polynomial function. Notice this is the generic polynomial from that previous video, okay? a sub n x to the n plus a sub n minus 1, x to the n minus 1, blah, 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 all the way down to um, a sub 1x plus a sub 0. And that's just saying um, write your de the degrees of your polynomial in descending order. That's all. All these a's, recall from our previous um, video, those are just the coefficients of your terms, okay? All right, so a sub n is referred to as the leading coefficient. Okay. And this first term here, the one with the highest exponent, it's referred to as the dominating term. It's going to determine if your graph is rising uh, as you go to the left and go to the right, or if it's going to be falling as you go to the left or to the right. This thing eventually is it's called the dominating term. It gets to be so big that the graph eventually looks like whatever this turns out to be because it swallows up all these other numbers because they're so small. Okay. It's kind of hard to think about because we're talking very, very large numbers. Right? So in the meantime, here's, here's the idea that's happening. If the degree of your polynomial is even, okay, if n is even, and if the leading coefficient is positive, then the graph will rise to both the left and right. Okay, so that's like your, that's like your um, y equals x squared. Right? So we'll do that. Okay? If n is even and the leading coefficient is negative, now remember what negative x, of, x squared looked like. Remember, that's going to be like such. Then your graph is will fall to both the left and the right. Everybody with me on what I, on how I'm wording it here? Okay. So if the degree is even and your leading coefficient is positive, then your graph is going to be rising to the left and rising to the right and doing a bunch of stuff in the middle. Could be doing a bunch of stuff in the middle, I should say. And if your degree is even and the leading coefficient is negative, then the graph is going to be falling to the left and falling to the right and could be doing a bunch of stuff in the middle. Again, we're not caring about what's happening in the middle right now. Okay? Keep in mind what x squared looks like, and it will help you figure out what x to the 28th would look like. It definitely would help you figure out what the end behavior uh, would look like. All right, so now if n is odd, so you're going to be thinking x cubed function, right? So you got x cubed, x to the 5th, x to the 17th, whatever. If the leading coefficient is positive, then the graph falls to the left and rises to the right. So that would look like our x cubed function, right? Falls to the left, rises to the right, right? And if the leading coefficient is negative, then that's the reflection over the x-axis, and that's going to be like such. It'll be rising to the left and falling to the right, okay? And again, if you keep x cubed in mind, if you know what the graph of x cubed looks like, then you can figure out what the end behavior is going to be for any odd degree polynomial, okay? All right, so that's that's the concept. So here's an example. Suppose we suppose this is a graph of a polynomial function. Now let's answer these questions. What's the minimum degree of this polynomial function? All right, that's from a that's from the previous video. Remember how to find that? All right, you count the number of extrema, the number of turning points. So you go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There's seven turning points. So the smallest degree that this polynomial could be is what? Is 8. Everybody with me? That's from the previous video, 8. So now my question would be, could it be a ninth degree polynomial or a tenth degree polynomial or whatnot? Well, it could not be a ninth degree polynomial. Do we understand why? Because the end behavior is going in the same direction. It's going up to the left and up to the right. That forces this, this polynomial to have to be an even degree polynomial. Remember, odd degree polynomials, they went in opposite directions. Down to the left, up to the right, or up to the left and down to the right. Okay? So the minimum degree this thing could be is 8. It could be a tenth degree polynomial or a twelfth degree polynomial, any, any even degree polynomial above 8, and it certainly could not be an odd degree polynomial okay? because the end behavior is going in the same direction. All right, the next question is, is the leading coefficient positive or is it a negative number? Well, since we rise to both the left and to the right, it is a positive coefficient. We don't know exactly what the coefficient is, but we know that it's a positive number. Okay? All right, does that make sense on the theory? All right, that's it for now. Study well. Please let me know if you have any questions.